This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the Elliot Kipchoge of website builders. I took over 30 minutes off my marathon PB by running slow to run faster. Well, mostly. Let me explain. In September 2017, I ran Berlin Marathon in four hours and two minutes. Six months later in Rotterdam, I ran three hours and 26 minutes. That's a 36 minute improvement in just a few short months. So after a fairly short preparation for Berlin, I knew I wanted to take a completely different approach to my training for Rotterdam. The main thing I wanted to change was to bump my weekly mileage up and hit the business end of my 12 week training plan running just short of 70 miles per week. Obviously that's a lot of running and the vast majority of that was at an easy aerobic pace. But I wanted to make sure that I could give my body adequate opportunity to recover between those runs. I took the decision to run five times per week rather than the perhaps more intuitive six times which would have allowed me to spread the mileage out a little bit more. I compressed the mileage into five runs of slightly longer duration, which gave me the benefit of the high weekly volume whilst also allowing for two total rest days each week. I'm not saying that this is a sensible approach for everybody to take, but as a bigger guy wanting to run what for me was high mileage, I knew I needed more opportunities to recover properly within each training week. In truth, I only actually spent three weeks running in the high 60s of miles per week, but in the process of building up to these big weeks, I ramped up from 30 to 50 mile weeks and beyond very quickly. Too quickly, to be honest. I'd never recommend increasing your weekly mileage as fast as I did in this little experiment, but I was confident that my body could handle it. The big take home from this first point though, is that increasing your weekly running volume is a huge part of seeing progress in your running. We'll talk a little bit more about specific training paces later, but first I want to hit on an absolute game changer in how I approached my nutrition during this training block. Okay, so there's a good reason why I haven't spoken a ton about running nutrition on this channel before now. My background, my experience, my qualifications make me really comfortable talking about injuries and running training, but nutrition wise, well, for me, my own running nutrition has been an ongoing challenge. So I'm not going to start telling you about the absolute best endurance diet that you must follow for success as a runner, but I will share with you what made an unbelievable difference to me during this particular training block. We all have our weaknesses and bad habits when it comes to food choices. Mine is chocolate. Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate, to be specific. I set myself a simple rule, knowing that losing perhaps 10 pounds would help a great deal in this marathon training block. I decided that I wouldn't be unrealistic and try to follow a super strict diet plan. Instead, I simply promised myself that I wouldn't buy any chocolate until after the marathon. Long story short, I kept that promise and the reduction in weekly chocolate calories that I was consuming alongside the high mileage allowed me to lose about 17 pounds between January and April. Obviously, carrying fewer pounds around made the training and marathon day itself easier and the best bit is that it all came from one small change, not a massive dietary overhaul. So perhaps ask yourself, what's the one easy change you could apply to your eating habits for an easy win to make you a better runner? Now, before I tell you about one of the biggest things that allowed me to improve my marathon time so dramatically, let me tell you about this week's video sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're finally getting your own business up and running, want to make a place to share a new hobby, passion or obsession, or want to create a personal blog, Squarespace makes it super easy for you to create a professional website. Their user interface is extremely intuitive to use, plus with Squarespace you get access to all their marketing tools and analytics and personalised support from their award winning customer care team via email or live chat. Whatever you need, they're available 24-7 to help out. Go ahead and start your free trial today over at squarespace.com forward slash James Dunn and when you realise you love it, make sure you enter the promo code James Dunn to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so back to looking at the training plan, this time in a little more detail. I was extremely aware that I was pushing the weekly mileage on very quickly as part of this little experiment. It was a calculated risk and I knew that I had to be very careful if I wanted to add any speed work at the same time. In the final three weeks before my taper began, I felt really good, so I decided to add some fairly tough 1k reps in the middle of my Wednesday runs. 
In retrospect, I do wonder how much good they actually did me. But remember, this is a breakdown of what worked for me during this specific training block. I'm sure you'll agree that there are quite a few things which I did which aren't exactly best practice. As misguided as these speed workouts may have been, they were definitely good confidence builders. I'm just not convinced that they did anything for me physiologically. I would have probably been better off simply sticking to building the weekly easy mileage and instead incorporating some gentle sets of strides at the end of midweek runs. That would have given me the neuromuscular stimulus without adding the fatigue that 1k reps no doubt did. I am, however, convinced that what I did during my long runs made a huge difference to my pace on race day. More about that in a moment. So this breakdown wouldn't be complete if I didn't also talk about the strength and mobility work that I was doing alongside my marathon training. If you've watched almost any of my videos before, it'll be no surprise to you that I was really intentional about making time for strength and mobility exercises to keep me running strong and running injury free. Was I in the gym three times a week lifting weights? Absolutely not. My philosophy around strength training during an intensive running training block is to put the running first and to have the exercises supporting that rather than making yourself tired in the gym and compromising your key runs. So it was body weight exercises and resistance band drills all the way, with some gentle mobility work focused around the hips, which is where so many of us often do get tight. In fact, the hip region is where I really focus the majority of this important injury prevention work. Following my 12-week glute kickstart program, which I know a load of subscribers here on the channel already have their own copies of, if you're one of them, thank you for supporting the channel. It's the little and often approach to these strength workouts that make the biggest difference when you're marathon training. 20 minutes spent working through a targeted routine three or four times a week will make a huge difference to your resilience as a runner. Okay, so if I wasn't doing a great deal in terms of speed work in this training block, what made the biggest difference in terms of my marathon pace? Well, for me, the answer's twofold. Firstly, my pace at a given effort improved as a result of the many hours per week I was running in my aerobic training zone. Some weeks up to nine hours. Time spent in my aerobic zone meant that I was simply getting more and more efficient as an endurance runner and seeing my pace getting quicker and quicker at the same average heart rate. Then the real secret source was the fast finish long runs that I did in the second half of the training plan. For example, let's say I was running an 18 mile long run. The first 12 miles I'd run at my usual long run effort, in this case trying to keep my average heart rate under 135 beats per minute. Then I'd run the last 6 miles at my target marathon pace. I was aiming for a 3.30 finish back then. There are various ways you can integrate target marathon pace work into your long runs. Fast finish runs are just one of them. It's nothing revolutionary, but boy does it work. Next up, make sure you watch the video on screen right now so that you avoid some of the biggest mistakes with running slow to run faster. I'll see you over in that next one.